Now let's have a look at the server. The server consists of these three highlighted layers here. The net, which is the entry point, server receives messages from client and acts on them, and the controller and model. So the model contains the state, which is the conversation. And if the state, that is the conversation, needs to be updated, uh, which happens when the message is sent, the model is called via the controller. So let's first have a look at the controller and model, which are very small. So the controller, the controller has only two methods, append entry and get conversation. Append entry appends the, an entry to the conversation and get conversation retrieves the entire conversation. We can see that both methods in the controller consist of just one line which calls a method in model with the same name as the controller method. And this is a typical sign that the controller is unnecessary and should be removed. But I kept it here anyway just as an illustration of a layered server-side architecture. Then there's the model also the model in fact does not do very much. There's one class in the model which is the conversation class that contains the conversation which is stored as a list of strings. Right so that's the controller and model. So then let's focus on the net layer. So in the net layer there is first the chat server class which contains the main method and starts the server and just as the simpler examples the server has the serve method where it spends it its lifetime accepting connection requests. So the server opens a listening socket on the specified port number and accepts connection requests on that socket. So the server calls accept and when accept returns there is an established connection which is handled in start handler and then the server goes back and again accepts the next connection and the server goes on like that forever. So when, when accept returns the newly established connection is with this socket that is returned and that is then passed to the start handler method. So let's have a look at the start handler method down here. So configure a linger time for the socket, a timeout and then create a client handler class. So the client handler has a reference to this chat server object and we'll soon see why that is needed. It has the socket on which it will communicate and it gets the entire conversation up to this point to be able to send it to the newly connected client. Then the client object in handler is added to the list clients. The list clients is declared up here. It's a list containing all client objects. So each client object is, contain, uh, is connected to one chat client. So the server maintains a list of all connected clients to be able to broadcast. Then uh, a new thread is created with the, the newly created handler. Uh, the priority is increased for that thread. We prioritize communica communicating with existing clients over uh, connecting to new clients. And the thread is started. So that's typical classic connection exception of a, a TCP server. Then let's look at the client handler. So first I will illustrate how it works. At the server, this is the server, there is the main thread which accepts connections, the chat server thread which continuously loops and accepts connections. And each time a connection is accepted, a new client handler is spawned. So the client handler is the loss handling co a connection with a particular client. Each of these client handlers are connected over the network. Uh, this cloud is the network. So they are connected with a client. One client per client handler. And the server keeps a list of all client handling objects. So there is a reference to each of the client handlers in that list. So when the message arrives over the network to a particular client handler, the client handler will forward it to the chat server object, not the chat server thread, but the chat server object, asking it to broadcast that to, to all uh, client handlers in the list. Again, remember th this red thing here, the broadcast call is to the chat server object, but it is executed by client handler thread. Uh, each of the client handler objects have their own thread. Let's call it CHT as in client handler thread. When a message arrives, the client handling thread calls broadcast on the server object, asking it to broadcast the me message, and that 
same thread CHT1 will in, in the chat server object loop through uh, all client handlers in the list. There are three in this image. For each of those client handlers, including the one from which the message originated, uh, it is sent to the corresponding connected client and the message is sent to the client. One message uh, sent from a client, the red thing here, um, results in three send operations for the thread CHT1. One send operation per client. Okay, now I realize I made a mistake here. It's not the thread, it, it is not passed to the thread CHT2, but is only handled by the object of, of that thread. It's like this. Only one thread is in involved in all these black operations. The handling thread of the client handler that received the message that calls the broadcast operation in the chat server object, which calls send operations in all client handler objects. So uh, one receive operation results in as many send operations as there are connected clients. And this could potentially be a problem because the thread CHT1 will be blocked until the send operations to all uh, connected clients have completed. CHT1 thread cannot handle any more messages from its client until the message has been broadcasted to all other clients. Okay, but of course on the TCP level there is a buffer here that queues incoming messages. So as long as the CHT1 thread is fast enough to avoid overflow in this buffer, eventually all clients will receive all messages. If the number of connected clients goes up or if some client for some reason becomes blocked and the send operation takes time, then we're in, in serious trouble. So we must be aware of this problem. This problem is in fact solved in the non-blocking uh, socket example later in the course. So that was one problem. This was problem one with this solution. There is in fact another problem and that is that there is really no ACK. So um, the client, this one for example, has sent the message and then it, this client will never receive an, any acknowledgement that, that the message was received by the server. The message is sent and hopefully all goes well. This is a very common way to handle client updates of, of the server. But we must be aware that there is, is the risk of, of lost messages. We know that TCP gives uh, FIFO delivery guarantee and resending and, and so on. But we must remember that TCP guarantees can only cover the TCP layer. So when the TCP ACK is received on the sending side, it means that the TCP message arrived in the network stack on the receiving side. There is no application layer ACK, of course. The TCP can only handle its own level. The message will arrive at the TCP level on, on the other side, but the application level, the actual chat program, can never know what happened on the other side. It might be that the message arrives at, at the in the network stack and then is lost somehow. Maybe the application crashes on the other side or whatever, we don't know. Important to remember this, that TCP act means TCP level acknowledgement, not application level acknowledgement. But we will not cover application level acknowledgement in, in this course. There, uh, That leads us to the field of distributed algorithms and reliable gr broadcast and group management and so on, which is which, which does not in, belong in this course, but in, in the distributed systems course. Okay, so that was problem number two. Uh, then there is a third uh, problem with this uh, program. We ignore message length. The receiving side just reads and assumes it, it got the entire message, neither more nor less. But in reality we should have a length header. So the length header should specify how many bytes a particular message contain. And then the receiving side can know that it has read exactly one message, neither more nor less. And that is also solved in the non-blocking uh, socket example. Okay, so three problems. Problem one was the uh, threading issue described below here and that's solved in, in the future uh, non-blocking example. Problem two was um, the applic application level acknowledgement which we do not consider in this course. And problem three was the length header 
which is also solved in the non-blocking sockets example. Now let's have a look at how this client handler works. The client handler spends its life in this run method. First, uh, just handle some streams set up, then sends the entire conversation as it was at the point when this thread was starting. So in here, in fact, there is the send, send message method, but we'll come back to the, this later. Okay, then it enters the run loop here, where it stays while the client is connected, that is for the rest of its lifetime. So what happens here is that it reads message from the client, creates an object of the type message, which basically is just string parsing. And then there's a switch on the command type, and depending on what kind of message it was, different actions are taken. In fact, all messages result in the server broadcasting something to all other clients. Either there is the join, a new user has joined the conversation, or there is a general entry in the chat conversation, or a user has left the conversation. Let's look at the entry, which is what this thread does when it receives a message from its client. So I run this in the debugger. And then another client. And then this client can send a message. And then we arrive at the breakpoint. Now this client is about to call broadcast on the server to broadcast the message to both connected clients. So the, this particular client has no username. We have not uh, executed the user command yet. So the username is anonymous. The username delimiter is uh, a colon we say anonymous colon and then the message and the message is parsed here in the constructor of the message class and stored in the message msg variable which refers to an object of the message class and down here we can see the contents of the msg object of the message class the type is entry that's the command for sending a message in the chat conversation the body is the message that was created and the received string uh, that was sent from the client. Well, it looks like this as expected. The command type, double hash, delimiter, and then the message body. So now we are about to construct a new message. The string is constructed here, and then it will be broadcasted to all other clients. So let's do that. We step into the broadcast method. So now we're in the broadcast method. Uh, method. So first thing is called the controller to append this uh, new message that looks like this to the existing conversation. Okay, let's not look at the controller, it's not very exciting. Then it's time to call all the other clients. Clients is uh, an array list which has the for each method that executes this for each element in the uh, collection of clients. Okay, so again, uh, I will not explain lambda expressions and functional programming in Java. Now, it, it is explained in the streams example in the previous video. Right, so it will call the send message method on each of the clients. So let's place a breakpoint there in the send message method in one of the clients. It's here. And continue, and now we are there. So this. Uh, method will be called in both clients, once per connected client. Uh, so now it's time to create a, a message that can be sent to the client that is connected to this handler. And that is again done with the string joiner. The message delimiter is the double hash as always. So we add to the joiner first the type which is broadcast that's the uh, name of the message sent from the server to all clients and then the actual message body and now we can see what the constructed message looks like broadcast the double hash delimiter and then the uh, message body and uh, on this uh, line here print line that message is sent to the client Okay, that's it. Not much more to say about this program.